It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, November 8th is a very important election uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, particularly here in Schuylkill County. A, a critical election, folks, very important. A lot of major things, uh, decisions have to be made. And we have on the show today, Dr. David Moylan. Now, Dr. Moylan is running for coroner. Uh, his slogan is bringing the profession of medicine to the office of coroner. I know m most of you sometimes you hear about the office of the coroner, what you know, what you know about the row office, but what does it mean? Okay, today uh, we're going to talk about the importance of that particular row office. As doctor, thanks for coming on the show. Sam, as always, it's a pleasure and privilege to be with you today. I appreciate that. Uh, Doc, the, first of all, let's talk about the, uh, the office of coroner, okay? And then we'll talk about you and what you're going to bring to the office. What, so uh, give me 101, uh, a little introduction of what the office of coroner is. Well, historically, this office goes back to the 1100s, and it was a distinctly British system. It goes back to the Magna Carta. Um, and the coroner was actually the agent of the crown, thus the name uh, coroner, carnet, whatever. And um, nowadays, it's an office that is charged with death investigations. If uh, there's any kind of a suspicious death, the body's found, whatever, it comes under the purvey of the coroner's office to investigate that and determine the cause of death, whether there was any foul play, et, et cetera. And in my journeys around uh, the county, many patients or uh, citizens have uh, come up to me and said, don't you have to be a doctor to be a coroner? And in the state of Pennsylvania, that is not a requirement. And, um, but there is a proud tradition of physicians serving as coroner in the county of Schuylkill. And since I've been in the county for the last 25, 26 years, uh, there were several physicians. Dr. Holland uh, preceded my uh, tenure here in the county, but there was uh, Dr. John Micah and uh, a good friend, Dr. Jimmy Langan, physician coroners. So, okay, so we know that the position of coroner is important, okay, and for the taxpayers and for the county people, why then should we have a person in that position who has a medical background? Well, one of the uh, duties is to determine the cause of death. And with a medical background, uh, with a thorough review of the clinical record, uh, talking to other physicians, it might be possible to um, come to a determination without exercising the uh, use of the autopsy. And again, that is a medical procedure. It's expensive and it certainly uh, can have effects on the budget. So that is uh, one reason. You know, and everyone today is so cautious of, 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 of budgets. You know, we're all trying to keep our taxes down exactly. and we want to make sure, especially with the county commissioners, any rural office in, in Schuylkill County. So to me, it would be critical that if, if I'm going to vote for anyone, and, and I tell people all the time, please, I don't care what affiliation you are, vote for people who are qualified, whether they're your friends or not friends. I don't want to vote for, I don't want to vote for Dave Moylan, Dr. Moylan, because I like you and you're a nice guy. I want to vote for you because you're qualified. I'm using you as an example as well as everybody. So with that being said, n knowing that the coroner's position is, is, has a budget and that if, if, if something goes wrong, if it's mismanaged, it's going to cost money. So there's other agencies that will not get, uh, you know, services. What's your background? So, I mean, a lot of people know you, but for those people who do not know Dr. Moylan, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my uh, journey through life, through uh, medicine, uh, took me to uh, the morgue very early on in my medical training. I was a physics major at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in the late 60s, early 70s. And after a couple of years in the physics department, I realized I didn't want to be splitting atoms. So I spent one summer at Paoli Memorial Hospital in suburban Philadelphia trying to get a taste for medicine to see if I would like it, to see if I could really handle 
the uh, more unpleasant aspects uh, of the field. And one of my first assignments in this little hospital under the tutelage of Dr. Ray Rogowski was to work in the pathology lab and uh, doing laboratory tests, but also when an autopsy would come in, I was assigned as his assistant or a deaner to go down and um, uh, help him assist him at the autopsies. And one of the first things Dr. Rogowski told me, and it, it's a Latin uh, term, uh, mortui uh, vivos docent. It's Latin for let the dead teach the living. And I saw that uh, saying again when I was at Georgetown Medical School uh, over the, uh, the morgue, the autopsy laboratory. And I think this is a, a very important aspect of the coroner's office. What can we learn from these uh, unfortunate brother citizens, sister citizens that have um, been uh, killed or uh, died of whatever cause? And uh, there's a lot to, to come out of that. And I hope to get into that a little later on. But I'd like to diverge um, for one moment. As you know, this is a, quote, off-year election. And somebody was saying that the turnout is going to be uh, probably very uh, minimal. And I'm thinking back to one thing that my uh, father had told me. And he said, uh, Buzz, that's my nickname, there's uh, too many uh, heroes, men and women, lying in foreign military uh, cemeteries across the globe. And I looked it up the other day. It's probably about 123 uh, thousand. So that's uh, 123 good reasons to turn out on November 8th, rain or shine. Yeah, I, I, I uh, agree with you 100% because what happens is we get what we pay for, so to, so to speak. People uh, sometimes like to moan and groan about a lot of things, but yet they don't exercise the right to vote. Get out there and vote, and then, then at least you have a say in the matter. Okay, so now we have some uh, um, bullet points here that I want to put on the screen, if you don't mind. What, what does Dr. David Mullen bring to the office of coroner? Okay, and there we have bringing the profession of medicine to the office of coroner. So the, the other slide would be, what does Dr. Mullen bring to the office of coroner? So, uh, well, I, I, you, you had asked me to put some thoughts together, and this is what I came up with. One would be uh, commitment. And... I've already uh, mentioned that I've been a resident of the uh, county for the last uh, 25 years. Uh, my wife, uh, Dr. Denise Moylan, is a pulmonologist, lung specialist. We raised three uh, lovely daughters in the county. Um, but when, if somebody would ask you, do you have any regrets, Sam? Mm -hmm. And one of the, the gr regrets that I've had is that I've never served in the military. And when I was at uh, Georgetown in the... Uh, early 70s in the medical school there. Some of the finest people that I worked with, classmates, were Vietnam veterans, and many of them were uh, graduates of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. So that uh, is kind of one thing in my dossier, if you will, that has been deficient, and I haven't uh, had military service. So I think this uh, service, and I'm uh, committing to just four years this is interesting. Uh, if you put that one slide up, Andy, the commitment part about, okay, um, which I find, you know, you have that, you know, a strong sense of public service and responsibility, uh, but and living in the county. But the other thing is, the bottom part surprises me. Self-imposed one-term limit. W what do you what do you mean by that? Well, uh, the term for Carner is a four-year uh, term, and I am self-imposing a uh, term limitation. I'm going to serve and serve well for four years. And then at that point, uh, again, because this is no walk in the park, it's not going to be Vietnam, but because uh, they're not shooting back at you, but this is going to be a, a stressful uh, time in my life. And uh, I want to want to serve, but I think four years uh, will be um, uh, enough. Uh, and at that point, maybe we can bring in a younger guy. Well, um, uh, the, uh, so, sometimes, um, you know, uh, is this set in stone? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, 
The second one. I'm okay. not a, a professional politician. No, I, and, 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 I, and I admire you for that. The only thing is that what I, what I say is when we get something good, you hate to let the seed walk out the door, uh, you know, uh, and when you look at it, and I'm, I, again, uh, you know, your opponent uh, certainly has what, whatever his offered, but in your case, um, I, could, I could understand that. The second one is compassion, okay? Uh, and, and if you want to put that up there, Andy, compassion, okay, as we respond to that. Be worthy to serve those who suffer. Well, and, yeah, and I'm great at little uh, slogans. and I, I think they're great. Um, but this one goes back to uh, a paraphrasing of the Greek motto for the uh, Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Fraternity that I was privileged to be elected to in my senior year at Georgetown. But that uh, Greek motto translated, uh, be worthy to serve the suffering. And I've modified this, be worthy to serve those who, who suffer, or who, ha who have suffered, uh, meaning the uh, patients that are referred to the uh, coroner's office. And I've been a beneficiary of the coroner system in Schuylkill County. 19 years ago, there was a knock on my door at four o'clock in the morning. There was a state trooper there to ask me to come to identify my brother's uh, body. And, um, you know, it seems like it was yesterday, but uh, one of the things that I would like to extend to uh, people, citizens who have lost uh, loved ones and come under the purvey of the coroner's office would be, I am committed to uh, meeting with family members again, within the HIPAA regulations that we're all bound by, but uh, to uh, go over the, re if there was an autopsy, explain the results of the autopsy. These are, of course, written in medical ease, and there could be important implications to the family members. Uh, yes, it was a gunshot wound, but we under uh, discovered uh, an early cancer or uh, some hereditary disease or an infectious process or premature hardening of the arteries. These medical facts could impact on the living. Again, the dead teach the living. Let me tell you, I, you know, uh, Dave, I'm gonna tell you, I think that is critical because those are things that uh, when you say the dead teach the living, that's so true. You just hit an interesting point. Someone gets shot by a gunshot, okay, and, and little did they realize that the person had some kind of disease or heart, uh, you know, heart problems when that autopsy uh, is done. Um, you're able to let the family know if there's any hereditary problems w that could exactly. exist. And, and you could save a lot of lives from that. That's, that's, yes. I think that's where the expertise comes in. And, and uh, perhaps uh, that meeting face-to-face -face would allow uh, some closure. I think that's fantastic. I really do. Now, the second part, of course, is my field. It's called communication, okay? And Andy, if you want to put that one up, okay, communication. And why don't you discuss this with us? Well, communications are very important. And I'm going to talk about that more when we get down to the clinical okay. uh, workup of patients. But I want to be able to get information out to uh, our citizens uh, in the form of an annual coroner's report. And in the last several months, I've crisscrossed Pennsylvania and have visited with uh, coroner's offices, uh, coroner's, deputy coroner's, medical examiners, Pittsburgh, Bucks County, uh, Luzerne County, and just uh, f finding out how they were uh, doing it. And there are wonderful computerized systems out there to manage the, uh, the information, more or less like the electronic uh, health record that, that is coming into the uh, clinics nowadays. So compu computerization of the records, uh, we'll be able to work with it as a team and then have a press conference, uh, maybe semi-annually, and a written report available to our citizens posted on the website uh, on an annual basis at the least. Folks, if you just tune in, I'm talking to Dr. David Moylan, uh, and he is running for coroner in Schuylkill County. So for those of you who are watching this in Luzerne County, this is the Schuylkill County uh, office, and he is running for coroner. His, his slogan, uh, bringing the profession of medicine to the office of coroner. Uh, and we talk about websites. You can watch this show 24-7 uh, on our website, which is SSPTV.com, and also on his website, which we're linking the show to. It's interesting to learn, as I said, as much as you can about the candidates. Another part of your bullet points here is collaboration, okay? 
Uh, and Andy, if you want to put that up there, and so we could explain what you mean by the collaboration. Well, there is already a Pennsylvania coroner's office or association, and there is an annual meeting that just occurred in September, I believe down in the, the Hershey or uh, Gettysburg area. Uh, again, that's a wonderful way of communicating with uh, other county coroners. There's actually 67 uh, counties in our state. Uh, but we are assigned, Schuylkill County, we're assigned to Region 8. Region 8 includes Pennsylvania, all of, I'm sorry, Philadelphia, the five suburban uh, counties like Chest Chester County, Delaware County, Bucks County, uh, I think Lehigh is all, also in there. But uh, basically we don't have a heck of a lot in common with uh, those suburban Philadelphia counties. They have different problems than we have. Some, some overlap, but of course uh, uh, the urban environment, suburban environment. We're a rural county, and we're up in the coal region. So my proposal is to uh, form a collaborative effort between the eight counties that abut uh, Schuylkill County, because we do have many things in common, and uh, perhaps have an a annual meeting. You know my uh, office over there at the Simon Kramer Institute in New Philadelphia, the, actually the center part of the uh, geographic center of the uh, county. Uh, we have a wonderful auditorium that seats uh, 300 people. And uh, as an annual event, we do have uh, medical uh, meetings there. I'd like to do the same thing for forensic medicine and invite the uh, coroners in the eight county uh, district uh, for this, an, an informal association. But again, we could discuss problems that we have in uh, common. And I would like each of those eight um, coroners to know that Schuylkill has a vested interest in our citizens. Oftentimes, uh, we're a bedroom community. People are going down to Reading to work, up to Scranton to work. They live in Schuylkill, but they're working somewhere else. And one of the important functions of the coroner's office is to investigate um, industrial accidents. And if uh, one of our citizens is uh, killed in such an accident, I want that coroner to know that I am interested in that uh, person and again, we can't afford to be doing autopsies for Berks County, say, but uh, perhaps if he knows my interest, um, that might influence a decision because that's a social justice issue is uh, uh, people that die in industrial accidents. So moving into the other one, which is consultation, which is probably correlating what you just said, right? Um, yes. Um, in my uh, travels in the last several months, I've been out to Pittsburgh. I've met with Dr. Cyril Wecht, who's a famed uh, forensic pathologist and is often involved in many cele celebrity autopsies. And uh, he has uh, pledged his uh, consultative help whenever I would uh, need it. Uh, and the other reference to consultation is that of the 67 counties, Schuylkill is blessed with one of only 22 board certified forensic pathologist. I'm referring to my good friend, Dr. Richard Bindi, and it's, it will surely be a pleasure working with uh, this fine physician. All right, clinical assessment, which is, is a, a, again, uh, a, a, all of these bullet points are critical as far as I could see it here. The critical assessment. Sam, I see a clear analogy between a uh, citizen that is killed and basically becomes a patient um, and is referred to the coroner system. And what I do on a daily basis with oncology or cancer uh, patients in Schuylkill County. And the first thing that we do is uh, a thorough uh, history. Now, of course, uh, the patient would not be able to provide a history, but we could get history from family members. And this is an uh, everyday occurrence when we're dealing with a patient that might have a brain tumor or might have cancer, but it is uh, associated with a dementia, and we just can't get reliable information from the patient. So we look to family members, friends, neighbors. Uh, so that'll be an integral part of the, the history in the coroner's uh, office. The next thing is uh, the electronic medical record. I've alluded to that. If we have a computerized document that Dr. Bindi could work on, I could work on, our uh, very important deputies can contribute to, and then we have um, information that could be 
accessed uh, from uh, secure computer locations. So we have the, the history. Next is the physical examination. I can't emphasize the importance of that. Uh, just examining a patient in a, a good lighted area and looking for any signs of trauma, uh, clues about the uh, time of death, um, it, it's all very important. So a physical examination. There'll be laboratory also. And uh, under the, some of my concerns that we'll talk about are the cost of the laboratory test. There's a national laboratory down in Warminster that many of the coroners uh, work on. But we could also work with our local hospitals to do toxicology screenings. Dr. Bindi is a, a fan of that, and uh, it can just be done on a urine sp uh, specimen. And again, that would be a screen. We could rule out uh, a, a drug overdose or intoxication. Um, early on and perhaps save some money that way. So we go to the laboratory. The next thing that is common in our clinical workups, uh, Sam, is x-ray studies. And this is in its infancy, but uh, it's being looked at by the military and some universities. It's called vertopsy, virtual autopsy. And it's basically using high-tech CAT scanning to uh, check uh, the body and make a determination whether an autopsy is even uh, necessary. It could be perhaps a quarter, 25% of the uh, cost of a regular autopsy. So the laboratory, and then finally the analogy for the living patient with the coroner's uh, patient is uh, surgery. Uh, the equivalent of that would be an autopsy, open the patient up, and in fact the, the name autopsy means to see for oneself, auto, to see for oneself. But that's, of course, the most expensive uh, link in this chain. Uh, folks, I'm talking to Dr. David Moylan. He is running for coroner in Schuylkill County, uh, bringing the profession of medicine to the office of coroner. It's a critical row office, folks, I'm telling you, and you want to make sure that whomever the person is, that they're fully qualified. Now, you, the last one here, you have some concerns, okay? And uh, so, uh, Andy, if you put those up so our viewers can see some of the concerns you have, and go ahead, tell us. Well, I've alluded to the financial considerations. Um, everybody's under budget constraints, and the, the use of the autopsy is uh, certainly a, an expensive one. But actually, I've, um, as, as in retail sales, you have to shop around, and I've found in my discussion with pathologists across the uh, state that the actual cost of autopsy can vary quite uh, widely to uh, you know, a, a, a nationally known uh, pathologist like Cyril Wecht versus, um, you know, a more routine uh, autopsy. And what also um, has me um, troubled is um, a request from a family member. We might be able to uh, rule out uh, a criminal act, but the family says, uh, Doc, I'd really like to know what happened to my uncle, uh, Charlie. Uh, this death was sudden. We didn't know about any uh, blood pressure or heart problems. And you know what many of the uh, coroners that I've spoken to will reply, well, this is not something that the uh, coroner's office can uh, fund, but we can direct you towards a private autopsy, say at one of the universities, uh, hospitals, and uh, Philadelphia or wherever, well, they generally charge uh, in excess of $4,000. And that's, uh, and usually at that point, the family loses interest sure. in uh, finding about how sure. the coronary arteries are on Uncle Charlie. But uh, I uh, think that we might be able to work with uh, families and uh, perhaps uh, if they're willing to make some contribution, we could come up with an answer. Uh, for them that would be useful. And again, it might not have to be a complete autopsy. Maybe if the interest is uh, what was the liver pathology, uh, perhaps even uh, just biopsies would, would do this. But uh, my, my thought is that we want to provide a service and we don't want to use the, quote, private autopsy as a roadblock. And uh, there were just two other uh, concerns. I already mentioned the industrial accidents. Again, a matter of social justice if someone is, has a wrongful uh, death. There was just an incident down in, in Berks um, 
probably an electrocution in an industrial accident. Uh, I just read about it in the paper. I'm surely not in a, a position to follow it now, but uh, that would be a case that I would be very much interested in and what, what was going on and how we could help as a, an office for a, a citizen from Schuylkill County. And lastly, drug-related, alcohol-related uh, deaths. Frankly, um, <clears throat> Sam, I don't want to see another roadside memorial with the little cross and the flowers yeah. by. And the uh, flower of our youth is getting uh, decimated. And I, I, when I've talked to other uh, coroners, they kind of throw up their hands. Uh, it's a drug overdose, oh hum. Uh, half the time the uh, DA won't even uh, prosecute. How do you know where he got the stuff? I want to be able to deliver to my DA or our judges information that documents with, beyond a shadow of a doubt what killed that uh, young person. I'm just saying young person, it could be anybody. What killed that uh, person and so that it would stand up in court. And I would like the word to go around the other counties that uh, there's a son of a gun over there in Schuylkill that has a, a bug up his tail about uh, drug related deaths. We better not sell it in Schuylkill County. Let's sell it down in Berks or over in, uh, up here in Luzerne or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that, that is my position on uh, evaluating drug-related deaths. As the director of the Simon Kramer Institute, and, and, and this is just a sidebar, okay, and, and, and it's, I'm, by far I'm not endorsing you or anyone, but I got to tell you that uh, I think your um, Simon Kramer Institute is, is such a, 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 a great asset uh, not only to Schuylkill County, but to the state of Pennsylvania. What you've done there, okay, is, is just phenomenal. And I, I know, uh, not for a fact, but I could assume that you've saved over the years many, many lives what you have to offer there. And that's just a sidebar telling, you know, letting you know that what you've done there and your people is just outstanding. Well, Sam, thank you for the kind words. And when patients uh, try to thank me for what I've tried to do for them, I tell them it's my privilege. Yeah. Well, you... Anyway, I just want you to know that, is, so bringing, we have about a minute and a half left, okay, so the, for, the, for the viewers here in Schuylkill County, you know, why should they vote for Dr. Moylan for coroner of Schuylkill County? Sam, when I've served my four years, I want to leave the office better off than when I started. And one of the other ways that I'd just like to comment on briefly is through academic affiliations. There's several uh, new medical schools in this part of the state the Commonwealth Medical uh, College here in um, Scranton. St. Luke's in Bethlehem has just uh, started a medical college with uh, Temple University. There'll be some bright young people there and we would like them to uh, perhaps have a, a, f a fellowship or an externship in the, our coroner's office working with the likes of Dr. Dick uh, Bendy. And I also found out in my travels out to Pittsburgh that there's Carlo uh, University. They have a, it was a Catholic uh, girls' school, it's now co ed, but they have a biology degree with specialization as an autopsy technician. They're looking to send students out for three months. We'd love to have them. I've had some preliminary uh, conversations. I'm sure there'll be a lot of administrative hurdles to get over, but I want to have an academically oriented coroner's office. Well, Dr. Moylan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Folks, uh, I'm telling you, uh, November the 8th, I think he hit it right on the head, 123,000 123, people died uh, and that are living or are buried uh, in foreign countries so we could go out and vote. Uh, and that's 123,000 reasons why you should vote November the 8th. Know who the candidates are. This show is seen 24-7 on SSPTV.com, plus on Dr. Moylan's um, uh, website. We're linking everything to his website. Know who the candidates are. Once you've decided who the most qualified are, then vote. Do not vote for anyone because they're your friends, because they're with a political party, or because they're nice people. No. Vote for them because they're qualified. That's why we have the mess we have in the country today, because people are oriented just straight this, straight that. It's nonsense. Qualifications are important. Please vote for qualified, for people who are qualified. We'll see you next time on the Samuel Sanchez.